Good morning, and welcome to our regular Facebook live stream where we share important community updates and information and keep you all in the loop as the world changes around us and also at our agency. Today, we have the blessing and the honor of having three really special guests that are gonna share important information with you as you plan through the summer and definitely plan to have that COVID-19 test. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the president and CEO, Melly, uh, Melly, wow, Molly <laughs> Melbourne, <laughs> who is the dynamic leader of the Southwest Community Health Center. She's gonna share important, great information with you to make sure we all get out and get tested. Ferguson, thank you so, so much. much. And trust me, I have been called much worse. So <laughs> Melly is fine by me any day. Uh, but thank you also for your ongoing partnership and collaboration. I greatly appreciate the chance to be here today and talk about some of the things that Southwest Community Health Center is doing around COVID. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure everyone knows is that we are open for business. We offer both in, in person and telemedicine services. Our dental department is back open. So any community needs uh, that arise, we can certainly accommodate. Uh, we are also doing a lot of testing. It is really important that we all know our COVID status so that we can plan accordingly. If we're positive, we need to quarantine for 14 days. If we're negative, we need to keep doing what we've been doing, social distancing and ensuring that we have that mask on when we are out in public or out in crowds. Uh, so I wanna let you know a little bit about our testing. We test every single day, Monday through Saturday at our 510 Clinton Avenue site. The testing there is by appointment only, so if that is something you would like to do, please be sure to call us. Our phone number is 203-330-6000, and we can get you set up for an appointment. We also do community pop-up testing every Wednesday at our 968 Fairfield Avenue location. This event runs from 9 to 1 every Wednesday, except July 1st, uh, and we can move you through that process very quickly. You do not need insurance, you do not need symptoms, nor do you need a doctor's note. You just need to show up. Uh, we have people who are walking the lines that speak lots of different languages, so they can help you complete those forms if you have any challenge with that. Uh, and we can work you through that process very quickly. The actual test itself is very fast. Uh, and then we usually get results back within a couple of days. We then follow up with all of the folks who have come through for testing, make sure that we get those results to them, and provide any follow-up care that may be needed. We are also in the process of finalizing our July calendar for the testing that we're doing with our community-based and faith-based partners. You will find events scattered throughout the month of July all over the city of Bridgeport. To give you an example, we are going to be serving the PT communities on July 7th. We will be at Liberation on Mill Hill Avenue on July 9th. We will also be working with the Bridgeport Islamic Community Center on the 19th of July, and we have something scheduled at the Caroline House on the 16th of July. So we are pushing out and working with all of the partners who are interested in hosting an event. Uh, again, this is a great way to reach the constituents of those partner agencies as well as more of the Bridgeport community. So please take, take a look at our website. You can find us at www.swchc.org and we have a list of our tests. So uh, we hope that we're able to serve you at some point in this uh, situation, both through testing as well as through any medical, dental or behavioral health needs you may have. Thank you so much for letting me be here and share this information with you. Thank you, Molly. Sorry for the slip up on your name. Uh, we are so happy to be close, growing partners with Southwest Community Health Center. They are an important part of our community and they are doing important work. So you would be very happy to know that COVID has not canceled summer. We still have some exciting activities and happenings here. And today we have the director of the Youth Services Program from the city of Bridgeport, Ms. Tammy Papa, to share some important information on how we can our youth can continue to have fun this summer. Thank you so much, Dr. Ferguson, for, for having me. me. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for the city to share with you some of what we're going to be doing for uh, the Lighthouse program this summer. Instead of an in-person camp, we are going virtual. So we have been providing virtual after-school services for the past month or so. 
and uh, decided that we would continue doing that uh, to ensure the safety of the young people that we serve. So we will be offering in all of our schools the opportunity for young people in grades K through 8 to actually sign on during the day between the hours of 9.30 and 2.30 and not only uh, get to have um, an additional hour of academics per day, but also enjoy a lot of enrichment activities that are being planned for them. We have unbelievable partners. Of course, um, uh, we have the Alliance as one of our partners, but we have others that have been so supportive throughout this, uh, whether it's Neighborhood Studios or the YMCA, Bethel AME Church, VIP, all of them employ tremendous staff They've done a phenomenal job at getting um, all of these activities uh, together and planned. Parents are gonna have the opportunity to um, not only sign their children up, but to also pick up the supplies that they'll need to participate in this program. We are going to um, be providing everyone with curriculum. The Board of Ed has been kind enough to supply us with that for all age groups and that is being printed as we speak. So in addition to all of the fun enrichment activities, we've got that coming and the uh, Board of Ed has also partnered with us to allow the young people to have access to Chromebooks. So parents will be able to sign a Chromebook out for their child so that they can fully participate in the program. We are so looking forward to this as an opportunity. We're getting better and better at it every day, and we hope that it's um, an exciting way for young people to stay engaged this summer while staying home and stay, be, being safe. So if you want more information, you can not only contact our office at 203-576-7252, but you can also visit uh, the city website at www.bridgeport ct.gov, Bridgeport is spelled out. You click on the department link for the Lighthouse program and it brings you to all the information that you need on it. So we certainly hope we have an opportunity to work with your children this summer. Thank you, Tammy, for sharing that important information to keep our children engaged through the summer. It sounds like an exciting virtual opportunity and kudos to you and your staff for shifting into gear and changing the method that you deliver services to our children during the summer. I know it can't be easy, but I know it's necessary and I'm sure the parents and the families will appreciate it. So now we'll move on to our updates and information sharing from the Director of Early Learning, Ms. Tanya Loy. Good morning. The Early Learning Division is planning to open, but we are taking it carefully and slowly. We're starting our opening in phases, and phase one will take place this summer, July and August, for those children that will be going to kindergarten. We're focusing on these children because they are the ones that need that extra last minute support before they leave us and go on to a different journey. The summer curriculum will focus on kindergarten preparation as well as uh, their social emotional skills. COVID has affected adults, but it has also impacted on children. So we need to make sure that our little ones are doing okay. Our anticipated reopen date is July 13th, and our staff is very busy in the process of contacting these families, finding out who's interested in coming back, also updating their contact information, and providing resources for the families. Our families are still receiving, are still being contacted to receive educational packets, and these include not just the paper packets, but hands-on materials that they can work on at home. The staff is also busy being trained on our new 
um, policies and procedures. They're learning about COVID health and safety measures that we're putting in place. And they're also getting our classrooms ready. So when our families do come back, the sites will look very different. The first thing you will notice is that we will have a screening process that will take place outside of the building. We will be asking uh, questions, a series of questions about the children's health, as well as taking their temperature. In the classrooms, the class size will be a little bit smaller, and there will also be lots of hand washing and safety and health measures that we're putting in place as well. We are also cleaning, 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 and sanitizing all of our sites, not just in the morning, but throughout the day. Everything that we do is based on guidance from the OEC, Office of Early Childhood, as well as the CDC. We're also working on plans for phase two. So we're gonna take a, a little while to see how phase one is going, and then I'll be back to share information about phase two. And on top of all of that, we are recruiting. Recruitment still goes on. We're not quite sure what it will look like in the fall, but we're preparing for our children to come back. We miss you guys. So if you know anyone that's interested in services, it's not just childcare, it's comprehensive services. Please contact our website. Please go on our website for more information, www.alliancect.org. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya, for sharing those important updates about the program. I'm sure staff and parents are eager to learn more information and phase one is starting off successfully, and I'm sure phase two will also be just as successful. I'd like to congratulate you and your staff for the hard work that you're doing to ensure that staff and families are safe when they enter the program and re-enter the program. Again, this is not an easy feat. We've all get, we're all getting different information day in and day out, and you and your staff have done a lovely, wonderful job at maintaining all the information, taking it all in, and making the changes that are necessary to make sure staff and family are safe. So now is the part of this segment where I get to give you, where I am um, pleased to give you updates about the, uh, the, the agency overall. First of all, I'd like to announce that we are hiring in our supportive services department and our energy assistance programs. We're looking for case managers and much more. So if you're interested, excuse me, if you're interested in applying for a job with the Alliance in either the case management department and or the energy assistance department, please go to our website at, as Tanya said, at www.alliancect.org and search jobs, as well as you can go to monster.com and enter Alliance CT in the search and all the open positions that we've posted should appear. We also would like to let you know that the supportive service department is operating on a daily basis. Though we have not been ready to receive clients into our office yet, we are still doing business on a daily basis via phone and internet. And if you have any questions or any comments or concerns, please don't hesitate to give us a call, 203-366-8241, and you'll be connected to the department that can help you best. I'm very pleased since the last time we spoke to announce some updates to our Black Lives Matter campaign. As you all know, last time we met, we did a moment of silence and said the names of Americans that were victims of violence basically due to the color of their skin. We recognize that systematic racism is alive and well, and we're doing our part here at the Alliance to make sure we make a positive impact on changing that trend. I'm pleased to announce that the Board of Directors just this Wednesday approved a number of action steps that the Alliance will take in order to help eradicate systematic racism. One of, those, one of those steps specifically 
is including the Juneteenth holiday on our schedule of paid vacations here at the Alliance. And this is not just a day off for our staff and families. This will be a celebration of freedom and also a day of education and information. We're putting together for our 2021 calendar what that day will look like, but we do wanna let folks know that this holiday will be added to our annual calendar of days off. In addition to that, one of the other steps that we are taking is to include a social justice lens on our strategic plan and ensure that we braid information and awareness of how we fight systematic racism and institutional racism through our actions here at the Alliance in everything that we do. So please stay tuned. It will be very obvious and very overt on how the Alliance will attack and work on eliminating social justice injustices here in this country and as well as in our neighborhoods that we serve. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us. We appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you with more updates and more good news from the Alliance.